A magnetic storm quickly spread over the northern hemisphere, but the province of Quebec bore the brunt. Over a million amps overwhelmed the power grid. Power stations went down like dominoes, casting seven million people into darkness. On the outskirts of Montreal, the Gombas family witnessed the blackout. I was sitting watching television. It was around maybe two, two thirty, and. Uh, quick power surge just went went off and then it came back on and then things just started getting dimmer like if everything had a dimmer switch to a television light bulbs it just kept on getting dim 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 and then it just stayed there looked at the light bulbs the elements were glowing red hot just the elements themselves and uh, even the house had a slight hum like a light transformed the whole house just had this general magnetic hum I got this weird feeling, so I looked, I just looked outside and noticed everything just glowing. The color of snow was totally, usually it's white, you know, now it's like pink orange, what's going on? And I just came back inside and I went upstairs and I woke up my mom. My son come and he shook me, he said, mother, get up, if you will see something, look outside, look outside. Then I go to the window, I open up, I lean myself out, and I see a bright, reddish, rusty light. It was beautiful, but frightened at the same time. To myself, I couldn't figure what it could be. I don't know, if it was a magnetic storm, it would have been more like a northern light sort of experience, you know? But this wasn't uh, my personal experience. I don't think it was a uh, magnetic storm. Could be uh, visitors, I don't know, maybe not, maybe yes. At first, I had a wrong opinion. I was thinking it's a spaceship. I thought it's a spaceship because that's why I was afraid to go out. I said I better stay in the house. Next day, uh, Hydro Quebec announced that uh, there was a magnetic storm in Quebec. Supposedly drained out all their power systems and was causing the sun. And you know, it's different when somebody writes about it and when somebody sees it. So I don't know how long I stood at the window, but I watched it really careful what it was, because I know there's not something ordinary, something big. The blast that knocked out Quebec's power was in fact a potent kind of solar storm that had been discovered only recently. In the 1960s, a team at the Naval Research Lab was perfecting a new instrument to look at a part of the sun only visible during eclipses. Usually not seen by the naked eye, the surrounding corona had long been an enigma. This blazing halo might bear witness to the sun's violent nature. The team figured out how to simulate eclipses, allowing them to view the corona on demand through a novel instrument called a coronagraph. Don Michaels was an astrophysicist on the project. Basically, a coronagraph is just a small telescope. You point it right at the sun, but you don't want it to be blinded by the sun, so you make an artificial eclipse. You do that by taking a black disk and holding it out at arm's length in front of the telescope. So now the sun's blocked out, and you can see the corona around the sun. To work well, instruments needed to be in space, above the veil of Earth's atmosphere. After World War II, solar science entered the space age at White Sands Missile Range. 
captured German V-2 rockets, lofted instruments to record the sun, the first ever views from space. But getting the film back was another story. And all they ever found was a big hole in the desert. Never found any pieces of the actual rocket, whether it buried or exploded or what. So the first lesson is don't let an object fall from 100 miles above the Earth, straight down, streamlined. When Don Michaels joined the rocket team, he helped them with a key advance. A coronagraph was put into orbit. Images were then transmitted back to Earth to be reconstructed on black and white Polaroid film. The satellite soon delivered a dazzling surprise. We saw pretty much what we expected to see for the first couple of months until mid-December of that year. The uh, technician who was pulling the film saw that there were some white spots on this particular picture and looked at it and thought, as you would, well, I guess that was a bad piece of Polaroid film. But he ran the next picture and there were still spots, but the spots had moved a little bit. And we did another picture and the spots had moved more. And they were moving at an enormous speed and they were enormously bright. And we had never seen anything like this before. The team had stumbled on a solar storm of unbelievable proportions. No one had imagined that the sun could fire off such massive blasts of particles. What they had seen, now called a coronal mass ejection, or CME, made the scalding solar wind look like a gentle breeze. The discovery took the scientific world by storm. No one knew what these events might do to Earth or how common they might be. To find out, a space station called Skylab was launched in 1973. The first manned orbiting laboratory, its instruments kept the sun under close watch. A clear picture of the sun's violent nature was beginning to take shape. The mission was recording on average one coronal mass ejection every other day. The discovery of CMEs was alarming. Space exploration was then in high gear. No one had suspected that astronauts on earlier missions could have been exposed to danger. If you look back in old textbooks, you see that the Earth is there in space with an Earth's magnetic field extending outward into space forever. No hint that there's electrons and protons. No hint that there are high energy particles from the sun. But when the first spacecraft were sent up, it was discovered that the space environment around the Earth is not benign at all. The August 1972 solar uh, storm event was very, very severe. It was the most severe of that part of the solar cycle. And it's been one of the most severe of the last two or three solar cycles. And the high energy radiations was such that the astronauts, if they had been en route to the moon at that time, could have had serious radiation sickness and perhaps could have been killed by that radiation. It was so intense. At the dawn of a new millennium, construction of the International Space Station began during Solar Max. The mission will expose more astronauts to the sun's dangers than ever before. Braving frequent spacewalks, astronauts put their lives on the line. NASA has taken special precautions the space station will have a heavily shielded room at its core where astronauts have a chance of riding out a solar storm.
Astronauts may be at risk, but they will get warnings. Down on Earth, there is no place to hide.